Joining us on 710K URV is Rob Crane. He's an attorney, a legal expert, our guest on 710K URV. Mr. Crane, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Now, where do you want to start? Because I want to bring up both sides. I want to bring up employees suing employers and then vice versa. Um, you know, let's start with the employers. Um, okay. Let's start with what we're where we're sitting right now in this you know historic time, and people coming back to so, work after being quarantined at home. So, what should employers do right now when it comes to COVID nineteen? And like you mentioned, Texas is reopening. I think I can't think of any one business besides water parks right now, um, and like theme parks that are still closed. I know that yesterday Governor Abbott announced that office office buildings are open. You know, pretty much. Your non-essential businesses are now open throughout the state. So what should employers look out for? You know, what the employer should do is, you know, realize that there's going to be a lot of tension in the workplace to start with. There's going to be emotional fear and there's going to be economic tension. Everybody's in an economic bind at this point in time. And they're going to want to find somebody who is responsible to be the point person for this time, this this COVID-19 response and making sure they're familiar with the guidelines of the Center for Disease Control um, and make sure that any OSHA guidelines beyond Center for Disease Control guidelines are also being uh, applied. Listen to your employees is one of the best things that you can do and set up just common sense, rational, reasonable practices and know your business. If you are a factory where people are going to have to work side by side, you need to make sure you're doing everything you can to get spacing and protective um, barriers between those folks. Um, if you're you, working at a grocery store, then you know what you need to do at this point in time. Um, if you've got an office space where you can keep people distance and have some people still working from home and Zoom, do the reasonable thing at this point in time, and you're going to be okay. There's a lot of fear by employers that they're going to get sued by employees, but if you've got just basic common sense with hand sanitizers around the office, If you're a facility that needs PPE, get that protective equipment. Um, But if you use those basic steps that are out there and and published, put somebody in charge of making sure that's being followed, you're going to be all right. You brought up uh, OSHA. You wouldn't happen to know if OSHA has been adapting to the new COVID environment. Any any, uh, changes? You know, OSHA has pretty much said, you know, follow the CDC guidelines. Um, You know, there have been over 4,000 already made for workplace safety um, up and until this point. Um, you know, the, the guidelines the CDC has put out there, they're not being, you know, really enforced at the moment. Um, most of what you're going to see is, is what we're talking about. If the government's not enforcing these kinds of guidelines in any way, shape, or form, and folks don't feel the need to implement them, um, and where they may catch accountability is in, in the courtroom. Um, so, I, we're not seeing a lot outside of the CDC guidelines at this point in time, and those are really, they're, I'm not saying they're voluntary, but they're not being really enforced at the moment. So, so employers need to take it upon themselves and, and to avoid any kind of civil liability. Joining us on 710 KURV is Rob Crane, a legal expert, our guest on 710 KURV, just talking about how COVID-19 is creating tension between workers and their bosses. What is the law when it comes to employers being sued if somebody does catch COVID-19 at their place of business? I'm talking about, it doesn't matter, like restaurants, bars, whatever's open right now, hair salons. If you happen to end up contracting COVID-19 at that place of business and they sue the business, well, well, that's that's why I want to ask what the law is behind that. So y'all are raising two great questions at the same time. Um, Now, the first thing about liability, if you are an employer in the state of Texas, and you carry workers' compensation insurance, then the only remedy for an employee that catches COVID or, you know, fatality involving COVID um, is through the workers' compensation system, through the labor code. They cannot sue you, um, except in a very rare exception. Um, And so if you've got workers' comp insurance, you're pretty much covered in that regard. Um, but if you don't have workers' comp, then an employee can sue you for negligence if you fail to act as a reasonable employer should have acted, and if that negligence caused the harm. And you just raised that point. If you've got to be able to prove as the plaintiff, you have the burden of proof mm-hmm. as the plaintiff, that more likely than not, you contracted the disease at your workplace. 
And as we know from you know, the experts uh, at every television station in America, this is a highly transmittable disease. And so if you've been around anyone else who's got um, this disease or if you've been out to places where you, know, you can't say for sure somebody didn't have that disease, um, you're going to have a difficult time meeting your burden. Um, so it's, it's going to be limited to circumstances where the plaintiff can really narrow down that they contracted that uh, disease from the workplace. Yeah, I was going to say, how do you do that? But let me ask another question instead. This is Davis Rankin. I heard uh, probably about two weeks ago, as people were starting to go back to work, uh, people complaining that if they went back to work, uh, they didn't feel safe, but if they said they didn't want to go back to work, they were going to be fired. If they were fired for not going back to work, then they could not collect unemployment insurance. Uh, do you know anything about this? You know, we work in, you know, we, we live in Texas, and Texas is an at will state, uh, meaning that, you know, employers yeah. can let employees go. Uh, you know, for you know, pretty much any reason they need to, except for a few protected um, reasons that are you know in the law that have been spelled out by the appellate court. So you know, employers can let folks go. Um, now, as far as you know, the the guide, the, the rules and policies that are being put in place as for uh, people who are let go and trying to collect unemployment, right now they're issuing these policies. Uh, so frequently, and they're setting the regulations out uh, literally uh, weekly and monthly, we're playing out right now what the answers to those questions are. We're, we're truly in a bit of an historic time um, in the fact that we have put policies out here and we haven't interpreted the policies through the appellate courts on these kinds of nuances and questions. Oh. Um, you know, there, there are questions about you know folks who are citizens of this country um, but they are married to a non-citizen, and you yeah. know that yeah. is potentially now affecting their ability to make claims on on unemployment benefits and so forth. So it's a yeah. it's a specific, and it's you've got a question, you need to contact a, a lawyer that specializes in those kind of labor areas. I wish we had more time, Mr. Crane, but I know we'll have you on the show again. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. It, it was a pleasure. That is Rob Crane, a legal expert and attorney in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Our guest on News Talk 710 KURV.